steppers, OTDs, Hasidim, ex Hasidim, tuna bagels, white shirts. I watched last night the documentary of one of us, and I want to thank you, all of you, whoever made that, put it together. So beautiful, so true, and I could just talk from my own personal experience. I went through the same exact thing, been abused as a child. Rebis, my father. Like, my father was one of those dads. You know, every shul, every community, every area had a few dads that everyone knew. They're the abusers. They're the they're, they're, they're very strict fathers. Like, my father was one of those, like, in the shul. Like, for example, if I didn't dive in straight or I didn't jump, you know, the right way. Or I didn't do it the right way. Or, for example, with Shamri, I, was, I wasn't doing it perfectly on my boobs. Uh, my father would slap me. Like, I would just get slapped or beaten all the time. Come here, did you say this? Did you say I love you, boy? Or you didn't say it like that, that father. So everyone knew that he was that, that father. Me and all my siblings, we got beaten up for every little stupid thing. It was a the nervous rack. But anyways, that's not what I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to get to the point why um, you guys are talking about leaving the religion or leave, losing the children. I want to say... I had a very similar story. Basically, when I got, um, one day I come home after work, long day of work, it was Friday afternoon, and on my refrigerator there was a sign saying, when the internet and the radio will go out of the house, um, call me to my mother's and I'll come back, something like that. And she left with the two kids. I have that paper and I'll post it soon. Um, I just want to say, so for a few years, they didn't even let me see my kids. I went to all the rabbis and the unim. I was still, fr I started, I just started then to, you know, leave the religion, started wearing polo shirts, but I was already a goy by then, so they wouldn't let me see my kids. I went to this rabbi, and he's like a Belzer guy, and he's like involved in helping um, families and everything, and he was telling me, not every father should be involved in the kid's life. It's not, it's, it's, a, it's not good for every, for every child. And I was like, what? My children need a dad. But bottom line, so after a few years, I went to court. Like you all say that they know all the loopholes. So I went to court. I took a higher lawyer. And they made emergency motion that I should be able to see my kids for Rosh Hashunah. Um, so I have my kids for Rosh Hashunah. For the sh it was for one meal. They, so my ex-wife brings the kids to my grandparents for one meal so I can have my kids then. And right after the meal, they pick them up. The day after the session, I get a call from a detective and the emergency has to meet me. So I went to the lawyer and I was like, what should I do? I'm being called by the detective. So he called up the detectives and we made a meeting and they say that I, they want to arrest me. For what? So they want to arrest me and my brother because uh, supposedly my brother molested my daughter and I was watching him. First of all, everybody knows me. I'm, I never hurt a human being. I never will go anywhere similar, close to that. If I see anyone hurting any human, especially my kids, like that, I would hurt them myself. Okay? So, this was the most shocking thing in my life. And the first few months, I was like, okay, I'm going to fight them and prove them different. But they know all the loopholes. Basically, they took my daughter to all these therapists and doctors and tried to manipulate her to tell that if when it's going to have, we're going to have the court date, um, the forensic, whatever, she should be able to say that she was actually molested and I was watching. So sick, so sad. So at one point, after spending so much time and money, I came to a point that I was like, so sick of them. I walked into court in the morning and I said, I don't want to see my kids. My, the jo my lawyer is like, you can't do it. And I said, I, I do not want to be anything involved with these people anymore. I'm done. I had arranged marriage. You know, the kids is just uh, the way they, they we, we had them. You know, I don't want to go into details. And you have to have every Friday night, you know, intercourse, um, no matter what. But that's not the point. Going to the point that I felt that I had enough. I don't want to hurt my daughter anymore. So basically the judge said, I'm not closing the case unless you get some visitation. So they made um, that I can have one hour every second weekend on a Sunday afternoon to see my kids, to take my kids to the pizza shop. They wanted to do a supervised. I said, I'm not. If you want to do supervised, then I'm walking out the case, I, I don't care what happens to the case. So that's the only thing that they said that I can have unsupervised visitations once every two weeks for one hour. And that's all I have with my kids right now. 
So I'm going to post that picture soon. I don't know how I'll get, it. I'll get it on that video. So you guys will be able to see the letter that my ex-wife left. There was nothing else involved in my marriage besides um, me not being that religion. Um, anyways, I really want to continue with all of you talking about it, discussing it, because the more we talk and the more we discuss it, it's healthier for us because we all went through the same exact thing. And from the bottom of my heart, I love you all, and I feel that we're one team. If we're going to stick together, we're going to stay healthy together. Cheers. Have a great weekend.